We especially would like to welcome any of you who are visiting, who are here for the first time, or are new to the parish. Mm -hmm. We'd like to have one of you. Let us take a few moments of silence to unite us mind and heart in prayer. take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep, and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were healing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you, and on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you'll have no recompense from your Heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so your almsgiving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may appear not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. We praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Never break the chain. Never break the chain. That was a quote from comedian Jerry Seinfeld when asked about his joke writing technique and how he came up with jokes and how he uh, conducted his affairs in terms of, of uh, uh, honing his craft of telling jokes. And he said that most, one of the most important habits is not to break the chain so, and to write a joke every single day, whether it's a good one or whether it's a bad one, successful or not, write one every single day, and to stay in the practice. Today, my brothers and sisters, we begin our campaign of Lenten fasting, of this time of repentance. And every year we hear these same scriptures on Ash Wednesday, where we are encouraged to live completely with our whole heart, as the prophet Joel says to us. 
And when we say our whole heart, we could also say it in a courageous way, that we bring courage into this Lenten season. Courage and strength to do the right thing, but also, again, mindful, as I'm sure I've said before in previous homilies, that when the word courage came into the language, the original intent or meaning of the word is to live life or to live in such a way that you live with your entire heart, you show your entire heart. And so we're also called to live, a courage, live courageously in showing our entire self, our entire heart, our entire being, our soul, our entire everything to the Lord. And we are also reminded that indeed we are called to enter into prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Then this season and this time we focus in on those particular aspects or practices to draw us closer to Christ, to remove things that have gotten in the way. And also we recognize that these practices are not simply relegated to the Lenten season. I mean, there are things that we there are things that we are called to do year round, even though we give them particular uh, focus in the Lenten season. And I remember my uh, grandmother oftentimes would uh, fast for various reasons, occasions, or intentions, and it didn't have to be in Lent. And ultimately, we remember that uh, we are, as Saint Paul says to his, in his letter to the Corinthians, that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ, representing, witnessing, and telling the good news, proclaiming the good words that others need to hear. We are ambassadors for Christ. But if we are honest with ourselves, we know that sometimes in our individual stories, there are kinks or outright breaks in the chain of the things that we're called to do day in and day out as Christians. Sometimes those breaks and those chains come as small little things, maybe habits that we develop, or maybe the people that we are associating with or hanging out or the conversation that we're having is not healthy. And sometimes there are all-out breaks, or sometimes we uh, let little things derail us greatly. You know, for example, and I know this well myself, that, you know, for example, if you are working on a diet or something like that, and you like to cheat one day, it's easier to cheat the next day, and the next day, and the next day after that. And we, so we know that in each of our individual lives and stories, that in many ways, the chain can become tangled, kinked, and sometimes broken. But we are here in this Lenten season to address just that, to get back on track of where we need to be, so that day in and day out, that we hope in the future from this moment on that we don't break the chain of the things that we're called to do every single day. And sometimes every single day is not going to be our best effort. Sometimes we have our great days, sometimes we will have days that we struggle. But the point being that we show up every day and not let the chain be unbroken. We don't let the chain break and we give our best effort day in and day out. And yet, in this Lenten season, we are called to examine where is it that we need to change. For some of us, the change might be simple. It might be that in our Lenten practices, we take on the things that we know that we should have been doing all along. Maybe practices or habits that have uh, fallen out of practice, if you will. Praying every day, or being mindful of the words or things that we need to say and or do. And for some of us, we may need to take on practices in addition to our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that will amplify or push us to the next stage of our Christian life, of our growth. But make no mistake, no matter where we find ourselves or what we need to do to keep the chain going, the truth is, is that uh, we begin right where the Lord asks us to begin. And that's where he began his public ministry, so that others may know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that the kingdom of heaven is near, and for which the Lord said in scripture when he began his public ministry, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is the first and most necessary ingredient to our spiritual life and our growth. And we all don't like it. Truly. I mean, do we, we don't 
enjoy repentant necessarily. Because it does require where we have to examine those kinks and breaks in the chain. <clears throat> examine those parts of us that have not been so consistently Christian or consistently practicing in faith. And yet we know, we know that if we do so, and the reason why Jesus began his public ministry saying so, repentance being the key, is that when we can get rid of the things that get in the way, we can allow Christ to grow more richly within us. So when we take away the things that are taking up unnecessary room in our hearts and our souls, we make more room for the Lord to dwell. And again, as we confront those negative things that have caused a kink in the chain, this season is not necessarily a season to be down about ourselves, but rather it is a season of great confidence and hope. And why I say that is this, because we're reminded of, uh, I believe it was Father Mike Schmitz, who said that, you know, one of the things that we, gives us great confidence, great hope, and great courage, and the ability to bring all the wounds that we bear in our life to the Lord, is that on the cross, and even after the resurrection, he showed us his wounds. He showed us his wounds so that we may show him ours. And know that he takes from us anything that can get in the way. Anything that can cause an interruption, break, and or kink in our life. So today, my brothers and sisters, wherever we may find ourselves, may we ask ourselves, where is it that we need to focus in on and repent? So that the chain may never be broken. Where is it in our Christian life, if we were to say day in and day out, Never break the chain. What is it? Where is it? How is it? Whatever the answer might be, may we bring that to the Lord this Lent season in our prayer, our fasting, and almsgiving, knowing that he comes here to take what interrupts our life, to heal us, to strengthen us, to make us whole, to draw us closer to him, and to be true to the identity that we have been born and created in, his likeness and image, to truly be ambassadors. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the, the abundance of his grace these ashes which we have put on our heads in penitence. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to the works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask you to come forward now to receive ashes. We're going to form two lines, just like we do for
Petition to the Lord who hears his children when they cry out to him. The response is, the Lord hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, gathered in heaven today, that at this season of renewal, all the faithful might be ambassadors for Christ. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For a world afflicted by evil, that leaders of nations might come together to seek the ways of peace. We pray to the Lord. these our prayers, grant them according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is number Sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness, and so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Oh 
and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handing himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ending, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. of grief of faith. Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by a sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you of gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dealer us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's offer to each other the sign of peace. Amen. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to suffer of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray. The sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord. Our Lord fast may be pleasing to you, and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take the Eucharist to home box and come forward. Let's take the gift of Christ as an issue of our prayers and all. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. By your heads for God's blessing. For out of spirit compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the prayer of St. Michael in the back here, Miss Olette. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Be thou the Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who crowd about the world for the ruin of souls. 